There is not, but the, I'm glad that we could fit both of them in. So this is Mark's amply prepared UX research lightning talk, and I've been a research uh, UX researcher for a month now. And so I am well informed and can tell you what I've learned so far. Uh, you won't be able to read this, but this is a UX research cheat sheet, and I've mentioned this to several people in conversations today. When we ship software and we ship new features and new pages, how do we know if it works? Does it do everything it could? And the answer is usually like, no, it could be better. How could it be better? How much better could it be? And UX research is a, is a means by which to validate your designs. So I'm going to tell you about the things that I plan to do in my second month as a UX researcher. Before you start on a feature, <coughs> user interviews. You don't tell them about your company and your product. You don't sort of bias them towards what you're about to make. You're trying to get who they are, what mental space they're in whenever they're doing whatever you're designing. If this is a finance thing or like writing checks, you want to figure out do they do that at the end of the week when they're exhausted or is this their highest energy task? You want to find out exactly who they are and learn how they work before you start designing things. And if you find that all you're working for is single parents that uh, are exhausted all the time, you need to take that into account and uh, not make your process exhausting. While you build, build prototypes and put them in front of people. This is a paper prototype, and this clearly communicates that it's not finished and that you can move things around, but you can get people's initial reactions, like, hey, what if the control bar is on the left? And then you get them to talk aloud as they, they tell you about what they're seeing and how they're feeling about it. Uh, there's a bunch of links that I'll figure out how to get to you later, but these are really good links. Um, and then while you build, as you're making small incremental prototypes or variations on your product, you put them in front of people and then you get them to think aloud while they're using it. And they'll say things like, okay, so I'm trying to find the pricing list on your marketing site. Okay, I see that there's a picture of like a, a person at a hospital. I don't know why that's there. Um, okay, I'm scrolling. Okay, there's like 18 links here. One of these might have it. And this starts to tell you exactly how users are using your website and what they're, what's going through their head as they're using these things. This takes some, uh, some getting used to. So you have to train people before you just say, yeah, I just think aloud, because people don't think aloud normally, unless they're me. But you get them, uh, you show them a video of somebody doing a think aloud test It's in one of these links, and then you prompt them for, hey, we need you to go and find this information on this site. Tell us what you're thinking as you're going through. And then measure the comprehension of your designs. They should communicate things very quickly, and five seconds is about all you get sometimes. Um, I worked at that booth all day, and people like walk by and look at the screen, and it's like two seconds, and then they're done. And that's what you have to keep in mind, is people are not going to sit there and be like, oh, a whole paragraph on how to use this tool. Okay, I'm going to read every single word. Like, that's not what they're doing. So there is a test called the five-second uh, visibility test, comprehension test, and it's incredible. This uh, five-second bar measured the uh, site understandability. And then there was a 60 second version of the, where you could scroll through the site and look around. And there was no limit. And the five second comprehension is almost identical to the unlimited time. So five seconds, show people something. I uh, have a screenshot of this later on. And then measure, measure task performance. If there's something complicated that somebody has to do, figure out all of the steps that they have to do to get there. If you can reduce the number of clicks and fill in the blanks a little bit, people will appreciate it. It'll take less time. And then if you're going to do quantitative UX research, this is a really good question. There's tons of questionnaires out there, but most people don't want to be asked 35 questions after they look at your mock-ups. They want to just say, hey, was this hard or easy? And this gets, it's a very good proxy for all of those surveys. Uh, this is a five second uh, test that I use. This is the landing page for uh, my company. One minute warning. And then, uh, so what I asked was, what was this about? What product do you think we sell? What's your first impression of the site? If somebody asks you what this company does, what would you say? So those are the types of questions that you're asking. Like, hey, do you get it after looking at this? Um, then I'll talk about some tools that we use. One of the things that we talked about um, was on our marketing site, what's getting clicks? We use Hotjar, which you can overlay heat maps and see what people are clicking on. And if, uh, if there were none on this button there, then I would say, what's preventing people from clicking this button? You start coming up with alternative ideas and see what changes. It also does mouse tracking, and this is an example of a really engaging paragraph to this particular user. They, people tend to hover over words as they read. If they're skimming, they'll skim down 
vertically to the side, and you can get all sorts of really useful uh, information as you watch this. I'll give you like another 10 seconds, but I'm gonna, not going to stop my ringer. Nope. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, this was a person that's super engaged with this. They're, they're really thinking about what they're checking. And then I want to skip to this one. Somebody drew a horse. And All that's right, uh, UX research. Time.